Hey guys, today I am bringing you our summer update. I have not done a monthly update all summer long, but I'm just gonna give you a recap of everything that we have done. The first thing I'm gonna start with is extracurricular activities. You guys know we are deep in extracurricular activities. Our girls thrive off of it. We have a really good time doing it. It teaches them so many things. But this summer we had two in gymnastics, two in volleyball and one in basketball. And needless to say, it was busy but a good kind of busy, not the type of busy where you're like, I want this day to hurry up and end. It was just a busy in enjoying, watching my girls enjoy what they were doing. An update, I shared with you guys what the girls would be doing this coming school year. One of my daughters, Maggie, our middle daughter, decided that over the summer, she decided she did not want to do dance anymore. So we no longer have a dancer. I have to be honest, a piece of me just died. <laughs> We have been watching her dance so gracefully and loving every second of it for the past five years. It has come to an end. I don't know if this is a permanent end or what. However, she made that decision. We sat down, uh, my husband and I, and talked with her about pros and cons and what they may look like. We got her reasoning for why she wanted to stop and we allowed her to make that decision. As a parent, that was something that was really hard, but we did it. She decided that all on her own. One thing I can really appreciate about it is that at nine years old, she felt confident enough and comfortable enough to come to us and say, I don't want to do this anymore. A lot of times, even as adults, you find that we will continue doing something all the time because we may disappoint someone or we don't want to go against what everybody thinks we should be doing. But at nine years old, she made that decision all on her own and we were not going to stop her. As much as I love fostering that within her, if she doesn't want to do it anymore, I'm not the one getting up on that stage dancing. I'm not the one practicing and going to all of these classes and doing all of these things. It's not that she doesn't love dance, her interest has just shifted. She will be doing gymnastics full time this upcoming school year and she has also wanted to sign up for soccer, which blows my mind, but she will be doing soccer. I will have two in soccer. So I have gone from being a dance mom to a soccer mom. <laughs> so that's it for extracurricular activities. The next thing is we have done gardening all summer long. We started late April. It has been a struggle. It has really been hard fighting against nature in these 100 degree temps. Craziness. But we have continued to work on our garden. It has been a learning experience in so many ways. There have been days where we did not want to go in water. We did not want to step outside. The bugs were attacking us, wasps everywhere, things are dying, cats are eating stuff up, but we continued on anyway. And I'm so glad that we started this journey three years ago and we won't stop. We're just going to get better and better and better every single year. With all of that going on, just imagine we had lots of crazy, chaotic, unorganized days. But as I said before, it was just good. It was just a good summer and it went way too fast. Now I'm gonna hop into curriculum. What exactly did we do this summer? What flew and what didn't? No pun intended, but kind of a little pun. You'll find that out. Okay, my girls worked on specific things this summer. Um, we always do language arts and math, so I'm just gonna run through quickly what they worked on. My oldest daughter did Wordly Wise. She is still working on her Wordly Wise, which is totally fine. I think she has maybe about two or three lessons left in her Wordly Wise curriculum, so she's going to continue. She also is still working on her Saxon math. Yes, yes. <laughs> She's still working on Saxon math. She is in doing 5-4. Now, if you've watched like, my curriculum videos, you know that she's supposed to be moving on to 6-5. However, we could not figure out why this was taking so long, why we were so behind when it came to this curriculum, because we started it at the beginning of the school year for 2021-2022. But the reason why is because she broke her finger at the beginning of this year, and we did not do Saxon math for about four to five weeks possibly even sick. Now she did do math, but it was all verbal and we did not do Saxon because I didn't want to do all those lessons. <laughs> that is the reason why. And we could not remember that. We did, it did not click for us until June. So we've just been slowly working through it. So she may start the next level, which is six, five, maybe the end of August, the beginning of September. We're fine with that. I don't want her to close the book on this Saxon math because she will miss something that she needs to get 
before she moves on to the next level. This is what it's like to have a homeschool life and things happen and you just have to roll with the punches. Some other things that they worked on as far as curriculum this summer is this. This is simply a daily comprehension workbook. If you checked out any of my previous videos about our summer plan, this was one of the things that I grabbed at Half Price Books for nothing and the girls have really enjoyed working through it. It has some good just daily comprehension information. They would read a passage and they would answer questions. It has Monday through Friday. Some days they would finish the entire thing in one sitting, which I'm fine with. I just wanted them to continue keeping their brain moving on comprehension. Also, my middle baby girl Maggie worked on elapsed time. They also worked in this book on times tables. It's simply a number search times tables. They had a really good time doing this. They're still working on their math facts, but it's not like super heavy and super stressful. This was a really great book to have. Some other things they worked on were this grammar book, um, Kids Know It All Guide to Grammar. Now I've had these books for, I have two other ones that are like measurements and something else with math, but I've had these for about four years probably. It just gives them sections, parts of grammar, then they have to go and answer some questions about it. It gives them an exercise to do. And usually they just picked one section and just went with it. This kept them focused on grammar so that they did not lose everything that they've learned and get completely out of the routine of homeschooling. And the last curriculum thing that they worked on was the mind benders. These are fun. I've been missing out, but they are challenging as well. The girls had a really good time um, trying to figure it out, as did I. Super puzzling. We are about halfway through, or maybe about three fourths through the book, but I will definitely grab these again. I've really enjoyed it. I also have one for my upcoming kindergartner. I haven't started on it, but I'm excited to get into that with her too. It's just a different way of thinking. Also, as a part of our summer unit study, we did a flight unit study. So we went through all things flight, we are not done with it just yet. We're going to go to a flight museum, 99 women in flight and history or something like that, <laughs> that is located here within our city. We're gonna go and check out that flight museum. I'm very, very excited about this. Really looking forward to it. Some of the things that the girls did with their flight unit study is they made paper planes. Now this has been through some things, but this was really, really cool. We used a curriculum. Where is it? Oh, here you go. We used the paper airplanes, Epic Airplane Air Adventures, and the girls did tons of folding of planes with paper. It gave all the instructions, it had books in there, it talked about aerodynamics and why the flaps do this and that and thrust, lift, drag, weight, all of those things when it comes to flight, it was so, so much fun. Some other things that they made, uh, paper airplanes, really cool designs and the, folding of the planes progressed in difficulty. They started out with just, you know, your basic folding airplane that we've all learned. And it just progressed in level of difficulty to some really awesome paper airplanes. Like I said, these have been through some things, but we had a ball like flying these through the house. It was it was really nice. And to learn the structure and, and the mechanisms behind how planes are able to fly, it was awesome. Some other things that we did, we had a build kit where you could build different planes. And here is one that they built also. And this was by the Wright Brothers, the first plane by the Wright Brothers. So this is what it looked like. The girls had a great time doing this. So that is what we did for curriculum for the summer. Now I'm gonna share with you the summer reading program you guys, this summer reading programs that we participated in have been super rewarding everything about it, the enthusiasm of the girls, how they were super on target and making sure that they read every single day and knew they would be rewarded for it. It was just amazing. I will do this every summer, all of these programs for as long as they are offered. The first one I'm gonna start with is the Barnes and Noble summer book program. They had this paper that they picked up from Barnes and Noble. Once they read eight books, they could then go into Barnes and Noble and pick out a book that was from this list here. 
So any of the books on this list, they have them sorted out by grade. Before we were even able to go and pick out books, we just went through and researched the different books so that we can make sure that we got something that was appropriate for our household. So this was the book list that the girls were able to choose from. They finished this one before you could even go in to get books. You could not start picking up books until July 1st, but they finished this with their, their eight books, probably around the middle of June. And so we just had to wait. And of course they waited very impatiently, but they were super excited to go grab their books. So Maggie picked up this um, epic uh, cat ninja book. This was her choice. And then Mallory picked up the I Can Read beginning reading one uh, this is Pete the cat goes camping and then Brenna picked up the insignificant events in the life of a cactus if I had to choose any book the entire summer that she was head over heels about it was this book this book is about diversity and understanding that everyone is different and accepting how you are different. There is a girl here, she lost her arms at birth and I don't wanna spoil the whole book, but she lost her arms at birth and so all of her life she goes through telling all of these different stories about how she lost her arms. Like they were bitten off by a shark or you know, she slammed them in the car door, whatever. She just likes to like embellish <laughs> instead of just simply saying I was born with no arms. But in this book, it also comes across other people with um, disabilities and, and struggles. There is a boy in here with Tourette syndrome and his father just wants him to just stop having that problem. Um, and so it's a really, really great book. And this is a part of a series. She read the first book and the second book. I can't remember what the second book is called, but I will link it down below. But if you have not read this book, it was an awesome read. But this book takes a cake for the summer reading. The other books that we got, they haven't read. So that was the Barnes and Noble summer reading program. So if you have a Barnes and Noble where you are, keep your eyes peeled for next summer. Hopefully they will have the same thing. You can't beat reading and then getting free books, especially if you love reading. The next summer reading program that the girls participated in was through Half Price Books. So the theme of it is a summer reading camp. They had all of these different trails that you would go through. Those trails were creativity, discovery, then you go and visit Half Price Books and you get your $5 book bucks is what they called them. Then you went through motion, imagination, and you went back for a visit and got an additional $5 book bucks. These different categories, the creativity, discovery, motion, and imagination, they would send you an email with a book list and also a very long activity list and also a activity packet that you could print off. So you were armed with everything that you needed. The books within the book list fell into the category uh, for which it was for that specific time frame. So in creativity, it focused all about like art was a really big uh, part of that one. And then in discovery, it, they wanted you to do something new. So on here it says study and learn and experiment with something new. They had different books that you may not have heard of with activities that you may not have done before. So that was really cool. In motion, they wanted you to look at things like sports, activities, extracurricular activities, which was perfect for our girls. So we found like some gymnastics books and checked out some of those books that they had on the list and read those. And then for the last one, imagination, they wanted you to create something on your own, create a story, build something. So our flight unit study with, along with that, Brenna is always writing little stories here and there. Mallory got to tell me a story of a little girl named Allery, which is her, <laughs> but that's how we did the creativity portion of it. So after they did that, at the store they put either like this little sticker here and they would initial and I was responsible for initialing that they had completed the task. We took that in and they got these little $5, it's like a fake $5 bill and they were able to spend those on whatever they wanted in the store. Brenna decided to grab Piecing Me Together and this book is by Renee Watson. She spotted it immediately because she's read some of the other books that Renee Watson has written. Brenna wanted to grab this book, she has not read it yet, but this was a really good find at Half Price Books. Another book that she grabbed was Standing Against the Wind and this one is by Tracy L. Jones. She has not read this one either. They were able to take their $5. They had to spend a minimum of $5. So we grabbed like these books were $4.99. So we grabbed a couple of bookmarks that were like 45 cents or so to get us over the $5. So essentially we really only paid like maybe 25 or 30 cents for each of these. The next book which Maggie decided to grab was a book by Jacqueline Woodson and this is Brown Girl Dreaming which is awesome because this is going to be a part of our history curriculum that we will be doing for the school year. And then Mallory grabbed the uh, Tales of the Rainforest. 
all about animals. We'll be learning more about animals this year, right up her alley um, for something that she was interested in. Now, if you notice, Maggie and Mallory only got one book a piece. Now they did get $10, which is enough for them to get a couple of books in there but they decided that they wanted to grab a couple of little stuffed animals and mommy was totally fine with that. We don't have many stuffed animals around our home and so they decided to grab these. I can't remember who grabbed what, but we did spend a little bit more for these because they were over the $5 mark, but they all had half price bookstore gift cards that someone has given them over the last couple of months. So they just used their gift cards and got what they wanted. Awesome, awesome reading program that you get to walk away with $10 that you can go and buy more books or grab stuffed animals. Now remember, Half Price Books doesn't just have books. They have homeschool curriculum, um, self-help books for adults. They also have like, toys and kits and art kits and things like that that you can get and the stuffed animals of course so it's not just books so if your child gets a gift card they can go in there and they can get a book and a toy like my girls did the third summer reading program that the girls participated in was through our local library now this reading program was awesome i've never done it before they were all so good like i can't really say which one was the best they were all awesome though um but this one you had to get to 600 points or 600 minutes of reading. So every day in the evening, the girls would log their reading time. They would log the book that they read and how long they read it. Timers are going off everywhere around the house, but they were excited to continue reading. Now this is the program, if you checked out my summer reading plan, which I will link that video down below, this is the program where they have an opportunity to win an iPad. They want iPads, <laughs> which we have one, but how great would it be to have three and nobody have to fight over it? each have their own. That would be awesome. They um, are doing the drawing for the iPads in the next couple of weeks, but the girls finished their 600 minutes within like the first two or three weeks of June. It started June 1st and it ran through July 31st. They finished and did a really, really great job. They were so motivated and they just simply had to log everything on there. They could also get additional points for specific activities. For example, if they read to their sister, the amount of time they might get an extra five points or if they read outside, if they read a specific type of book, there were seven different things that you could do throughout the summer to get additional points on top of your logging your minutes for your reading. When they completed the program, they each got these awesome certificates. So here is Brenna's. And the theme for this summer was Oceans of Possibility Summer Reading Program. So here's Brenna's certificate of completion. And then we have Magdalene's. And then we have Mallory's. So the girls have their reading certificates for the summer. Once they completed this, they were able to go pick out not one, but two books from our library of their choice. When you walked into the room, they had books laid out on the tables. They had them organized by age group within there and you could just pick out two books. The girls had the best time going through their sorting for books. So Maggie picked up Hello Universe. We have not read this. Um, I did kind of look it up briefly and it had really great reviews, so I thought we would go ahead and grab it. It's by Erin Kelly. She also picked up Other Words for Home, which is by Jasmine Warga. Mallory picked up Lola Gets a Cat. For some reason, she's fascinated with cats. And then she picked up Jabari Jumps. And these are both Scholastics. Brenna picked up Holes, which is awesome because we are actually going to do a literature study on the Holes book. And then she also picked up Tristan Strong, Punches a Hole in the Sky. I believe this is book number two of part of a series. This was her choice. I can't say that I was like 100% on board with it, but we talk about things that are not real and what that looks like. The message that this book is her portraying is awesome. She has not read the book yet. I would like for us to read it together. There's a lesson to be learned in everything and this will be a really good read for her to just understand how it gets challenging and who we lean on when we are in those challenges. So I, I went ahead and allowed her to grab this book. So that is what they were able to do for their summer reading programs. Now we are just sitting back waiting for someone's name to be called to get the iPads. If you want to see how our school year is going, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some of these videos.